and it looks like it's two minutes past. Uh, you're all ready to get started partying? We can get started. Anybody bring drinks? I did. Uh, yes, here's my well, fireball. Everybody's this is got an overachiever. <laughs> yeah, I'm well, with you, Renee. I'm with you. All right. Well, unfortunately, I'm the so, I'm the designated driver. I have water. Uh, yeah. So are we? Uh, are, we're not going to do a shot just yet, are we? Are we going to wait a little while? I think we better well, wait. <laughs> better, better, better wait. Okay. Hey, Allie, you want to head us off? So we asked folks, but it looks like uh, only Allie and I have done uh, the uh, micro stories. So we we did little micro holiday stories for y'all. And uh, Allie, if you'll start us off and share your uh, micro story, I am going to mute everybody else if that's okay. So I will unmute you later on. But okay. uh, we want to make sure that Allie has uh, the ability to um, have to share her story and not get. Uh... Okay, go for it. All right. Well, my story is, uh, is like uh, Annette said, is a micro story. We worked really hard to keep it fairly short. Um, and it surrounds the characters from my newest series, the, the Six Strings in a Dream series, uh, with the band called the Bentleys. So here we go. The Bentleys were huddled around a fire pit in Miles' backyard, enjoying the warmth and sharing an adult beverage while they waited for the snow to arrive. I have my fireball. I can't believe we'll get another white Christmas, said we're looped in arm with Juliet. We must be doing something right, Keith joked. Ma smiled at her young friends around the fire. I think it's safe to say that you've been doing many things right. You've cut three albums and have done well with live performances. I'd have to agree with Ma's assessment, Hank said. You all have come a long way in such a short time. You've got a great deal to be, be thankful for. I'll drink to that, Wayne said and lifted his beer. I never would have imagined this dream would become a reality. Juliet's phone pinged with a message. She read the text and looked up, tears shining in her eyes. Is something wrong, Cedric asked when she saw a tear slide Juliet down Juliet's cheek. Juliet shook her head. No, quite the opposite. More great news. The text I just got from Carrie says that she has booked our first headliner tour. Jack Daniels and, the, and Wrangler will be our sponsors. Are you freaking kidding me? Keith said as he jumped to his feet, nearly knocking Riley over. He grabbed Riley to steady her. Juliet held up the phone. My dear Bentleys, I am happy to send you all an early Christmas present. Jack Daniels and Wrangler have agreed to sponsor your first headliner tour. So get busy and think up of a name. Merry Christmas to you all. That's incredible. Cedric kissed Juliet's cheek. Boots and Roots, Wayne said. What? Cedric asked. A Boots and Roots tour, he repeated. That's got a nice ring to it, Hank said. How about a Boots and Roots tour? Juliet sent a text to Carrie. I like it, and I'll run it past Mark. Have a great holiday, and we'll return to it in the new year. Thank you for everything. The Bentleys wouldn't have made it this far without you. Ha, go have fun. You deserve it. Will somebody pinch me, Keith requested. Ouch, he cried out when Riley pinched his cheek. Not that hard, he teased and kissed her. Cedra's eyes grew wide. You know what we should do? What's that, Wayne asked. We should put our Facebook and Instagram pages to work tonight. Cedra answered. How so, Juliet cocked her head at Cedra. We should get Riley to record a video of us wishing our fans and supporters a happy and safe holiday season. The fire is the perfect place to do it. Let me run back inside for my iPad, Keith offered. When he returned, he handed Riley the device. He and Wayne stood behind Cedric and Juliet. We are the Bentleys, Juliet said. We want to thank our fans and supporters and wish you all a happy holiday season, Cedric stated. Wait, Ma said. Juliet's introduction is fine, but I think you should all give thanks simultaneously. Cedric nodded. Let's give it a shot. Ready, Riley? Absolutely, she answered. 
It took two tries to sing, but they had a short holiday message, and Keith quickly posted it on social media. Now for the icing on the cake, Hank said and pointed to the sky. Snowflakes have begun to fall. Happy holidays, everyone. I would also like to thank my fans and supporters for a great year, and I hope that you all have a happy holiday season. And look forward to hearing more from the Bentleys and Ally Spooner in 2023. Uh, book three in the series, um, Out and Lab, will be out in, in March of 23. And I have begun writing uh, book four already. So these characters are, are stomping around in my head, uh, wanting more and more of the story to be told. So that'll be a, a big project for me in 2023. But happy holidays, everybody, and have a great one. Thank you, Allie. That was awesome. And uh, I, I got a pre I've been getting a preview of uh, Out and Loud because <clears throat> I'm, I'm going through it. Just sent it to you, by the way, the, <laughs> the final proof, proof, proof. And uh, it's awesome. And I'm so happy to hear that there's a fourth book because I was going to ask that question. I, I was like, wait, there's some questions I have. Like, what about Wayne and Mel? And what's going to happen with Riley and Keith? And so there's well, book, book four right now is tentatively titled Tupelo Rose, which will have a very significant meaning. meaning once I get into the story. So, uh, you know, it's, it's fortunate for me that the, the title seemed to always jump out and come first. So I've at least got that hard part done. Now, now to write the rest of the story. Awesome. Okay. Hey, um, Renee, I am going to unmute you so that you can, or I'm asking to unmute. I think you have to unmute yourself. <laughs> and, uh, can you share whatever holiday message or whatever y'all are going to do from the dry heat? And it's, it's hot there, dry right? Dry heat, it's been freezing. Has it? Yes, it was 28 degrees the other morning. Holy crap. That's, this Florida girl don't like that. <laughs> it's supposed to be 18 here Friday morning. See, that's not natural. That's, it's that's just not. Minus three here. See, that's... Stop your caterwauling. I'll take uh, 28. Well, you know, I thought that if I had to put up with 116 day after day after day in the summer, I'd get a break in the winter, but it's it's not fair to get cold and hot. Oh, okay. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Share your message for us. Um. So I did not do my homework and I don't have a micro story to, um, to share, but I do wanna say happy holidays. I hope everybody has a wonderful end to 2022 and beginning to 2023. Moving forward. Thank you, thank you. Okay, Fran, I'm, I'm gonna ask you to unmute and uh, want you to share a holiday message with everyone for us. Well, uh, actually, I did not even know about the micro uh, story, but uh, my husband and I have been dealing with COVID for the last week, so I haven't been doing much of anything. And it's friggin' cold here, too, in South Carolina. It's supposed to be below freezing tomorrow, about 25 degrees, so I pulled all of my plants in from outside that I could pull in. But uh, an update is I haven't written for several years, haven't been inspired to write for, for several years. But I have to say that last night, having nothing else to do and not feeling like, like anything else to do, I started back on maybe the final story of my Illusionist series. So hopefully I will have that done takes me probably about a year to write, but hopefully not that long to write that. But I hope to put a finale <laughs> to that one. But it's going to involve new characters and be more fantasy in the fact that I am bringing in uh, elemental dragons, uh, the wind dragons, uh, 
water dragons, and Gaia, which is not a dragon, but everybody knows who Gaia is. So, and then that should round up all of the characters that I've put into my stories for that. And then who knows where we'll go from there. Awesome. Yeah. I just just so for for those who might not know it, but I've been like a stalker fan of Franz for years before I even became an affinity writer. And I and I had I had her uh, website actually on my desktop for the longest time. And anytime something new came up, I was constantly checking for her new stories. I've read absolutely everything of the Illusionist series. It's a phenomenal series. So for those of you who haven't read or don't know Fran's work, you, you should really check it out because it's so awesome. Okay, so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna share before we uh, uh, before I do I, I share my computer screen because I've had have some other messages from some other folks that I put into a PowerPoint that I want to share with you all and I'll do it via my screen share. But before we do that, I'm going to do my my own little micro story. And um, I did a micro story continuation of uh, George Georgetown Glen. So this is this is my little micro Christmas story with a Georgetown Glen that I'll read to you all right now. Seville kicked off the snow on her boots and entered their cozy home that Fee had lovingly restored. The fireplace cackled and Seville note crackled and Seville noticed the three stockings hanging above, two already filled with random treats. Seville knew she needed to get cracking on Fee's stocking. Fee, she called out. Sunny bounded into the large entryway with her tongue lolling and a pair of antlers tied to the top of her sandy colored fur. Seville leaned down to greet the rescued pup and began to laugh. Where's your mama, pretty girl? Fee strolled into the room and offered a smile to her wife. I was finishing up on dinner. She walked to the antique table where they usually set their mail and keys. We got an invitation for the annual holiday party at Georgetown Glen. Did B or Lucy say anything about it today while you were working on the electricity in their new clubhouse? Seville shook her head. Nope, but I didn't really see them. I did see George though. Fee arched her eyebrow. Oh, what prompted a visit to the saloon? You only go to George when you have something on your mind and believe he can give you good advice. Seville shrugged. She wasn't about to reveal her complicated emotions around the third attempt at pregnancy. She knew how disappointed Fee had been the first two times they'd tried. Don't even get her started on the worries about finances and her doubts about her ability at parenthood. If this third attempt failed, she wasn't sure how she would soothe the love of her life. Nothing important, just you know, butch stuff. Seville answered, when is the party? I'm down for a party. Lucy has perfected her bartending skills, much to B's displeasure. I knew how much more, I knew how much mature women could let loose. I never knew how much mature women could let loose. They're ridiculously out of control sometimes. I know, right? But what did you expect with Lucy leading the pack? So true. Plus, Lucy's perfected her cannabis cookie recipe. The last time I got so stoned, I thought I saw a ghost. Oh, that's right. We've been seeing ghosts for years. Seville chuckled as she looked at her beautiful wife, who seemed to glow against the soft light from the fireplace. Although Fee was deliriously happy, she wasn't exactly sure where Seville stood on the prospect of becoming a parent. Sure, she'd agreed and had and been the perfect supportive spouse going to every appointment with a fraternity specialist, but she also knew Seville was conflicted. She'd bet their house the reason Seville had gone to see George had to do with their attempts to get pregnant. <clears throat> this would either be the best Christmas gift ever or the beginning of the end of their marriage. B, Seville, and Sonny strolled into the saloon as Seville announced with cheer. Yes, the gang's all here. So where's the spiked eggnog? Lucy scooped the spicy treat into two mugs and handed them to Seville and Fee. But Fee set her cup on the bar, hoping no one would notice. Unfortunately, Ruth, the other ghost, and George's wife, tilted her head and floated over, sprouting an almost angelic smile. The spirits weren't always able to make physical contact because it took a great deal of energy. But Ruth managed to grab Fee's hands as she said, Oh, Fee, you are glowing. Congratulations. 
Seville whipped her head around, near, nearly spilling her glass of eggnog. Huh? What is she congratulating you for? Um, well, I was hoping to share the news with you after a party. Kind of Christmas present. At least I hoped it would be a gift, Fee answered. Seville's eyes went wide. We're pregnant? Fee nodded. Are you happy? Seville looked at George, who stood stoically in the, in the corner with a slight smile on his weathered face as he nodded once. A smile blossomed on Seville's face. Yeah, I am. I can't wait to buy the peanut a motorcycle and a little black leather jacket. This is the best Christmas ever. B approached Fee with a new eggnog. This one's unleaded. Lucy clapped her hands together in excitement and raised her glass of eggnog to Fee and Seville and the newest honorary resident of Georgetown Glen. I do hope you're going to make B and I the Peanuts godmothers. Actually, I think this little one, B stroked her stomach, is going to have more than two godmothers and one godfather. She lifted her glass in the air and everyone took a sip of, of as George blessed the group with one of his rare smiles. Okay, <clears throat> that's my little micro story, uh, holiday story. And uh, looks like, well, looks like we have a video, sort of. So Adele, I don't know if you see on your bottom screen where you can add video, but here we are. We see you or you're in. All right, so <clears throat> here's what I'm gonna do now and hope this works. I am going to share my screen so that you all can see the, um, the other messages from other uh, affinity um, participants in our little affinity holiday extravaganza here. And hopefully you will be able to see the PowerPoint that I am going to put up on the screen right now and run. Hello, I'm Joan Dragon. To all our readers, I want to wish you and your family a wonderful festive season with all the very best wishes for 2023. May it be filled with everything you wish for and more. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from my family to yours. Jen Silver here. Greetings from England, where it is very cold at the moment. Sorry I can't be with you live in person, but it is way past my bedtime when this Zoom meeting goes out. I would, though, like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and much happy reading in 2023. Holidays, Del Robertson here with a special affinity greeting for everyone. Uh, so apologies in advance, I'm not a professional reader and there may be bad puns and bad rhyming, etc. And forgive me if I get a little tongue tied, but uh, let's see if we can't get this show on the road. So we're calling this rendition an affinity solstice. It was a bit before solstice or whatever your holiday designation. The writers at Affinity HQ were well into the celebration. Natalie London, Jen Silver and Annette Maury were rocking out to jams on the old karaoke. What lyrics they were singing? Well, we can't really name copyright infringement if you know what I mean. I need to be going, said Renee McKenzie, edging toward the door. I've left all sorts of camp spread about the forest floor. Hang on, I'm right behind you, said S. Ann Gardner. It's been swell, mates, but I can't stay any longer. Wait, 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 said Irish. You can't leave just yet. There are deadlines that still need to be met. Lacey Schmidt caught the faux pas right away. I thought we gathered for the festivity of our choosing this day. Your pretense was false. Your words were misleading, tricking us into working. I think I too will be leaving. This may come as something of a shocker, but at home I've got a lady friend waiting, my very own doctor. Fine then, but come have a drink before you go. It's much too cold out there in the snow. Irish was stalling, trying to cover her. Hey, don't be crass, sorry. <laughs> she inched toward the mantle, lifting up her glass. To A.C. Henley and Erin O'Reilly, she raised up a toast to our affinity sisters no longer with us that we still miss most. Oh, what could the writers do? What could they say? They had to lift their glasses and salute and stay. Every time someone tried for the door, Irish would lift her glass and say, let's have one more. 
Pulling out for AC who gave us McKee. Hey, Dale Robertson made a face. This drink tastes kind of funny to me. To Erin O'Reilly, come on, bottoms up. She wrote such great stories like the one about that old 55 Ford truck. My drink tastes weird too, said Linda Christ in a stage whisper. But cowgirl up and drink another one down for our dearly departed sisters. The hour grew late as they drank and they drank with Irish naming every story of errands of which she could think. They had shot after shot of Irish's whiskey and eggnog concoction. Soon they were all suffering from overindulgence and intoxication. Each time they tried to beg off, Irish would shout, just one more drink. Please no more, said Lacey. Erica Lawson is ill in the sink. We haven't forgotten what you tried to pull, said Annette Mori. You tried to chick us with work. You spoiled my karaoke. Hey, you tried to come up with something that rhymes with Mori. Why can't we do both, said Jen Silver. Get our song on and write a story. Huh, guess it wasn't that hard to rhyme something else with Mori, karaoke, Mori. So long as you put the emphasis on the proper syllable. Irish went ashen, plopping on her butt before the fireplace. A lone tear rolled down her cheek. Oh, such a sad hangdog look upon her face. Don't you see? Don't you get it? I miss my friend. Stories like Next Time, Fearless, Arsenic, and Victoria's Secret. We won't see the likes of those again. Creative plot lines, locales, and collaborations without limit. I'd bring back any of Aaron's characters in a minute. When suddenly outside there arose such a clatter. Allie Spooner ran to the door to see what was the matter. The writers demanded to know who's left to arrive. Who else should we expect? Irish, this better not be another one of your devious tricks. Who's there? Allie's face pressed to the door. I really can't say. Because you're too short for the people. Get out of the way. Allie was shoved aside. The door was flung open. Who is it? Somebody really should have spoken. For outside in the night and blinding snow, what should appear but characters from the imagination of affinity writers? Oh dear. Without so much as a by your leave or may I please, they stormed inside on that cold winter's eve. Writers were left staring with eyes wide in anticipation as they searched their protagonists for names and or identification. Lacey's ladies from playing with matches were there. Thank the stars that's about internet and dating and not pyromaniacs, my dear. There were the ladies from Walk Away and Cash to Release, Shea Granavia, folk rock star with her velvet voice for saving grace. Del Robertson's Bodie from Malodorous, that lecherous swords woman, and My Fair Maiden's Gwen, professional sacrificial virgin. Chris Wolf, pirate, and Alexis DeVell, perpetual damsel in distress. Even St. Paul's trouble from the cat that came for Christ's mass. Zari, Annette Mori's lead from Sculpting Her Heart, and the women from out of this world. That's solid gold romantic comedy art. <laughs> Don't forget Tony, Sophie, Kim from SS Management, and Val from the organization. There's the mob, the FBI, covert operations, and one badass agent slash master assassin. Ali Spooner was surrounded, she was in trouble, by lesbian vampire from the bayou and sexy Sasha Thibodeau. With werewolves from the Devil's Tree and Bound's Master Vampire, the danger couldn't be greater. At least there was also Nat St. Croix, all-around hero, beach armor for trapper and traitor. Renee McKenzie said, oh sure, you just had to conjure my character from 23 Miles, the one that's a serial killer. Robin Hicks raised her glass, winked, and said, that's why you should write about nice southern gals like Miriam and Esther. Mine can drive the cold winter away is quite safe, said Natalie London. As is mine, said Jean Silver, changing perspective and changing times no one gets done in. Erica Lawson cringed as she spotted a familiar ghostly specter. I'll think twice before writing about free-spirited free -spirited corpses next year. Casey Gallagher's hat trick players were hitting about a hockey puck. Pleasure workers, trophy wives club, private dancers were, wait, what rhymes with puck? <laughs> World War II pilots from the women's air transport up literally guarded the door. The black knight and the lady shouted to be heard, cease, desist, no more. Irish took a shot, screwed up her courage and said, show up uninvited is quite rude. 
Vampires, werewolves, and sex-crazed ogres, your manners are crude. Some of you are downright scary. For us, this isn't much fun. That's it. Enough. This party is done. The vampires hissed. The werewolf snarled. A witch crooked her hand, her fingers all gnarled. You thought our stories were done, that the adventures were through? You better listen close, dearies, because if we got some news for you. Yes, yeah, said Betty, you thought of us in your imaginations, breathed life into the ether and gave us manifestation. Pirates and warriors, ladies and maidens that needed saving, on the pages of your books, you've left us scarred, battered, and bleeding. The writers were surrounded and being backed into a corner. There was a knock at the door. Oh, whoever it was, they needed to warn her. We were your puppets, your toys with which to play, said the women from Galveston, 1900. When you were done, you put us away. The knocking at the door persisted. I know you're in there, a disembodied voice insisted. We refuse to go quietly into that dark night, said Renee, serial killer. We're much more than cannon fodder and page filler. Please just tell us what you want, the writer shoved Irish forth without hesitation. A nice sacrificial offering? We're open to negotiation. <laughs> Sasha Thibodeau said, we want more time, time for me and mine. I agree, said my fair maiden Gwen. Let the world be my home, not the pig farm again. Don't forget us, don't put us up on the shelf. Not like that story about Sin Claus, that sexy naughty elf. You only speak of her during the holidays, us, all of us. We want to, rem we want to be remembered for always. New plot lines, stories, and exotic locations. The Boar's Head Inn, Winterbourne, and battlefields with mass mutilations. What? The Chandler's daughter saw the looks of suspicion. Battlefield scenes make for great live action description. Irish drew herself up as tall as she could and folded her arms over her impressive chest. And if the writers don't want to, you can't ask them to rehash old stuff that they've put to rest. Eyes narrowed and glared, a deathly silence filled the air. Swords were drawn, guns were cocked, Palacey screamed, hey, no fair. As one of the characters advanced, each step drawing ever near, with no way to retreat, all the writers could say was, oh dear. There were so many characters that they filled up the house. There wasn't room left for even a solitary mouse. When suddenly the door splintered open and what to their wondering eyes should appear, but the boss. And I don't mean that man that travels with flying reindeer. A mouse wouldn't fit, but no one could keep out JM, the dragon. You know, I really feel the need to rhyme dragon with flagon. Her eyes flashed, characters and writers alike trembled and quaked with fear. What's going on? Why are they here? I asked for new stuff for the coming year. JM turned her dragon glare of death, soon to be trademarked on Irish. Some characters got out of hand, Iris shrugged. It wasn't my doing, I'm not so foolish. Dragon waved her hand at the miscellaneous characters of fiction. How else do you explain these deviations from the description? Lacey raised her hand. Um, I've got doctorates of plenty and describe it scientifically. Things turned upside down and went sideways pretty quickly when we mixed the nog with a fireball whiskey. That's it. I don't know what shenanigans are afoot that caused all of these characters to escape from their books. But let me be clear when I tell you of my plans for future glory. For 2023, I want new plot lines, characters, and stories. You can write novellas, short stories, long tales, or epics. I need serials, ebooks, audios, and stunning new graphics. For you older characters, again, with the trademark Gladden, Dragon Glare of Death, Get your overly described sexy selves out the door. Go on, leave forthwith. There was cursing and rousing and the brandishing of many swords and guns. Stop it. This is a business. This is no place to have fun. If it makes you feel better, if it soothes the ruffled feathers, we'll revisit some of your characters, perhaps during spring when it's warmer weather. Then, just like that, the characters of days gone by disappeared in a flash. The writers tripped over themselves, rushing to the door in a mad dash. But everyone was gone without, without so much as a trace, leaving them staring at the dragon, astonished looks on their face. JM said, go on now, go get back to work. 
I want stories about cowgirls, detectives, psychics, and grocery store clerks. Lesbian astronauts, librarians, and barbarians. Even prehistoric lesbian librarians will do. WLW, contemporary, mysteries, fantasy, action, adventure, and romance too. She took a long drink and made a disgusted face. No wonder you were saying things, she said before taking another taste. She took another draw, drank of the concoction all down, then turned to see her rider staring at her with a frown. She shook her head, calling any materializing manifestations. She had a new year to plan. There was no time for illusions and frustrations. I'll chain you to your desk. You'll work the whole night through. Right, right, right. I want 12 stories from each of you. Every storyline edited and then proofread again. You know what you have to do? Oh, and they'd all better have happily ever afters too. Okay, that's it, the end. <laughs> Happy holidays. I was going to ask Annette if she has time for one very short micro story that I had written very years, ago, very many years ago. Absolutely. But she has disappeared off of the planet. Uh, she'll be back. Uh, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How's everybody yeah. else doing out there? <laughs> ah, silence. Very much. <laughs> My wife is working it's on getting it, getting it open. Uh, Annette, I was, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, I was going to ask you if I could share one very short micro story that I had written years ago. Absolutely. Do it. Go for it, please. Okay. It's about two elderly women who were characters in another book, and it's called Death, A Christmas Story. Perfect. It was a flower. Okay. It was a flower. She was a flower. What kind? Did it really matter? They were both dying and nothing was going to stop the inevitable. Youth and beauty had disappeared a long time ago, leaving behind the wilted pet petals of age and eventual decay. And yet, well, yet was a word that was filled with hope and contradictions. Life and death were about both. Death always won in the end, but no one was very good at predicting its arrival. Tonight was different. Are you ready, Jennifer? The voice asking the question was deep, soft, and soothing. Jen opened one eye, trying to focus on the shadowy image by her bed. Go away. I'm sleeping. It's time to go. I said go away, Jen grumbled, refusing to open both eyes. Jennifer, you, you must come with me now. I know who you are. I'm not going anywhere. You can't make me. The shadow moved closer. The face was barely discernible under the hood but the iridescent black eyes glimmered with an unworldly glow. Leaning down, its cool breath fanned the old woman's cheek. You know better than that. I have the final say on all that lives and all that dies. There is nothing and no one more powerful than me. God won't let you take me. He loves me. The laughter was not cold or cruel. It was kind in a strange sort of way. Ah, God, which one, he asked gently. There are many, you know, or none. That is the beauty of believing. It gives comfort to the living and hope for the dying. In the end, I am the one who takes everyone and everything on this final journal journey. A pale white hand reached towards Jen's face, its slender fingers stroking her withered cheek. Startled, Jen opened both eyes to fully look at the figure by the bed. For the first time in years, her vision was unimpeded by cataracts. Her forehead wrinkled and her eyes narrowed as she stared suspiciously at the cloaked figure by the bed. I'm not going. You don't belong here. Glancing at the woman lying beside her, Jen smiled. She does. She loves me. How'd you get in here? Did Susie say you could come in our room? No, I come and go wherever I please, when I please. That's rude. You're a rude man. You're not supposed to be in a woman's bedroom without permission. That's not right. Get out. Ah, but I am not a man, nor am I a woman. That's ridiculous. Of course you're a man. 
I may be old, but I'm not blind or stupid. You think I'm stupid, don't you? Just because I forget things, Jen took a deep breath and exhaled huffily. Well, I'm not, so don't think you're fooling me. Not a man. What else could you be? Again, it laughed. You're not stupid, Jennifer. That's why I know that you know who I am. What I am is irrelevant. Come now, I have more lives to visit. As much as I am enjoying your company, you are not the only business I have tonight. Well, if you're so damn busy, go get the others first and leave me alone. I'm not going anywhere. Susie won't let me. And you can't take me because Susie won't let you. I don't go anywhere without her. She promised she'd always take care of me and I'm holding her to that. As with many promises, it's one she can't keep. You humans always do that. Eventually you realize there are things beyond your control. Not this. Jen had always been a stubborn woman. Even her dementia couldn't prevent that. Susie often said she was more hard-headed than ever. Granted, she had improved during the past year, but Jen still had many moments of forgetfulness. During those times, Susie, her wife, remembered everything for her. Susie said I was not to leave home without her or Lindsay. You're not Lindsay. She'll be angry if I go with you now. Perhaps I should take Susie too, Des suggested. Would you come then? Jen seemed to consider the offer, but then shook her head. Nope, she's sleeping. You can't wake her up. It's not good to wake people up when they're asleep. Why, just you being here would give her a heart attack. That would kill her. You don't want to kill her, do you? Besides, if you had wanted her to begin with, you'd have said so. Death was at a loss for words. Had a, it was always behind schedule. Thousands of souls and living organisms, it was already behind schedule. Thousands of souls and living organisms needed to be escorted to their final destination in the next several minutes. Jennifer, I am out of time. You are out of time. We must leave. Turning on her side, Jen stared longingly at the still figure lying next to her. If only Susie would wake up, she'd know what to do. Susie knew everything. Setting her jaw firmly, she rolled onto her other side and closed her eyes. I don't have to leave. Susie's sleeping and you can't wake her up. It's not time yet and it's not my time either. You made a mistake and are just too stubborn to admit it. Come back tomorrow. Now go away because I'm not talking to you anymore. I'm tired. Taking a deep breath, death exa exhaled slowly. Having infinite patience had its disadvantages sometimes. It had experienced this scenario time after time. For many, resistance, resistance was normal. Leaving the normal world, leaving the mortal world and their loved ones behind was difficult for most humans. Others greeted death with open arms, tired of their physical and mental problems. Those with dementia and moments of lucidness welcomed the release. Jennifer, if I went with you, where would you take me? Jen opened one eye to peek at death. Am I going to heaven? I cannot say your destination was predetermined a long time ago. I am merely the escort. Oh, that's poppycock and you know it. Whoever heard of an escort not knowing where they're going? Would you go with me if I showed up at your doorstep in the middle of the night and I said I was taking you somewhere? I doubt that would happen. You're damn right it wouldn't because I have better manners. Company is supposed to call before they came, she hesitated. Did you call first? Susie never said you call today. She, she always tells me when somebody is coming over. I didn't call. She's not aware I'm here. Then your mom and dad didn't raise you right. You need to learn some manners, young man. Never show up uninvited. That's just good common sense. Now go home, and the next time you want to come here, call first. Susie will tell you if it's okay. Jen closed her eye. And don't do it at night. That's just plain rude. For the first time in all the eons of its existence, death had finally had enough. Black eyes blazing, the shadowy figure vanished. A faint breeze brushed Jen's cheek. Raising her head, she looked around. Some people have no manners, she mumbled. Coming into our bedroom at this time of the night, why, he could have been the death of me. As she drifted off to sleep, Jen thought she heard soft laughter. Jen... 
Jen, time to get up, a voice whispered in her ear. Yawning, Jen opened her eyes to stare at the most important person in her life. I've made your favorite breakfast. Let's get you to the bathroom and then go eat. Is that man eating with us? Susie's brow wrinkled. What man? That man who woke me up last night. He wanted me to go with him, but I refused. You told me that I was never to leave home without you. He was very nice, a bit strange, though. I can't imagine why he was wearing that raincoat. It doesn't rain in here. We don't have a leak in the roof, do we? Maybe he was here to fix that. Maybe that's why he was here. He wanted me to help fix the leak. Jen's head bobbed up and down, as if confirming her own conclusion. Susie frowned. This is going to be one of those days. Maybe tomorrow will be better. Don't worry about it. The roof's not leaking. If he comes back, you just tell him we'll give him a call if we need him. In the meantime, we have presents to wrap. Tomorrow's Christmas, remember? Lindsay and Becky are coming by later for dinner. As Susie helped Jen stand, she groaned. The aches and pains of her arthritis were more intense this morning. You know, Jen, if you put on one more pound, you're going to be the death of me yet, she teased. Death watched the two elderly women slowly moving down the hall toward the bathroom. Neither noticed the two roses on the nightstand. The day before, the petals were dark, almost black and wilted. Today, they were a vibrant red. Smiling, its black eyes glinted with suppressed humor. Not today, Death said. Not today. The end. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Oh, awesome. That was awesome. Okay, my wife finally uh, got uh, the bottle open, and I have my fireball here. Does everybody else have their fireball? Everybody else have their stuff? Okay, here we go. Yeah. Okay. For 2022, the final uh, to affinity and beyond. To affinity, to affinity and, beyond. and beyond. Cheers. Definitely. Hmm. Woo -hoo. Okay. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. That'll warm you up. That'll warm me up. Yeah. Woo. So I just have one uh, last announcement. Uh, I do have a book coming out. I think it's after Allie's. Allie's Out and Loud comes out in January, right? No, I've got a short story that's coming out um, on Kindle Unlimited only called I Am the Storm. Um, the, okay. the, uh, the Out and Loud won't be out until March. Okay. Uh, I think my undercover love is coming out early next year, probably February. Uh, Renee, Renee, do you have anything on the horizon that you want to tell them all about? No. <laughs> Actually, after not writing for a very long time, I have started working on something. Um, I started decluttering my computer last weekend, and uh, next thing I know, I found a little snippet of something I wrote right after I got here to Nevada and started working on it. So... I wasn't going to say anything because I always jinx myself, but I think I'm going to think I'm going to have something finally for 2023. Awesome. awesome. And Fran, I know that you've got, you're working on uh, the next illusionist thing. Awesome. Dell, you got anything going for uh, next year? I do. Tell us can about you hear it. Me? Yes, I can. Okay. I wasn't sure. I thought maybe I was muted still. No. Uh, so I've got something. It's it's in line somewhere behind y'all stuff. Um, it's it's going to be line edited. It's called Remember Me, and it's about the Alamo. It's set in 1836. Awesome. Yep. Looking forward to that. Absolutely. Okay. Me too. <laughs> Anybody else have any final words before we? Say goodbye to 2022 and wish everybody uh, happy holidays. Uh, yes, Annette, I want to say that you're the only reason I started writing again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so Seriously, happy. I, 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 say, I say that truthfully and honestly. I mean, you you have mentioned it. And and uh, so I thought, you know what? There, there has to be one more book left. And, and uh, it was because of your incentive, I should say. 
encouragement Thank incentive. Thank you. I awesome. appreciate that. That's awesome. Good job, Annette. <laughs> Yeah, Alice, Alec keeps me going. Uh, I haven't written a word for months. I have to get back to it. Maybe I'll get a prod from Allie again. She'll kick my ass and make me get yeah. in gear. All right. Happy holidays. Love you all. And uh, see you in 2023. Sounds great. Thank, Thank you. you. Happy holidays. Bye -bye. Bye, everybody. Happy holidays, everyone.